Where was the turning point? I believe America's turning point was Joseph McCarthy. And again, with the Berlin Wall falling down. Joseph McCarthy was so discredited, it made it almost into a joke. And when the Berlin Wall fell down, we beat it. And so now we disregarded it. Well, here we go again, down the same road. I want to bring in M. Stanton Evans. He is the author of Blacklisted by History, the untold story of Senator Joe McCarthy. Tell me, America, this is such an important turning point. Tell me, when you went to go look for the documents on Joseph McCarthy, what did you find or not find? I found a lot of stuff missing, a lot of stuff that had been censored, a lot of stuff that was uh, in the records in one place, but blacked out in another place. Mostly what I found was uh, that uh, the FBI files, which backed up what McCarthy was saying, had been withheld for 50 years. And we now have them, or many of them, and they show essentially that he was right in general. There was a massive penetration of the government, and that it was covered up, and that he threatened that cover-up. And that's why he was isolated, demonized, and destroyed. Right. That's the technique. Okay. Um, tell me about uh, Dyes, because he was a Democrat. He was the precursor of uh, McCarthy in the sense that he investigated the same things. He was doing it at a time. He was a Democrat. He was the chairman of a committee. He was doing it at a time, mostly in World War II, when the Soviet Union was our ally. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people just didn't pay any attention to him. I mean, he, they, I had those hearings. They're very fine hearings. But a lot of the information that, that McCarthy later had, Dyes did not have. He did not have direct access to the FBI stuff. I'm not sure McCarthy did either, but McCarthy had more stuff coming into him. And McCarthy was, I mean, he was just an imperfect vessel, or was he not? Was he, was he clean? Was he, he just completely... He was imperfect, as we all are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he made his mistakes, but he was telling the truth. Okay. And the truth was huge. It was so huge, we turned out the big lie... Uh, Hitler and so there's also a big truth, a truth so big that people can't believe it. Right. And that's that's kind why of what you're saying. That's w why I didn't want to read this, because it changes, it changes your focus. And nobody wants to. I mean, gosh, nobody wants to believe um, that there were people in our government that were bad. You can believe in individuals, but you can't believe this mass kind of this cover-up. There but were hundreds. There were hundreds of them. You showed me a document. Can you bring this again? Yeah. Tell me what this document is. This well, America will horrify you. This is, what this is, Glenn, is a, a record of the so-called Yalta Conference. This is long before McCarthy came along. This is 1945, where Churchill and Roosevelt met with Stalin at Yalta, which is a resort on the Black Sea in the Crimea. And this is the transcript of what, or minutes of what happened at that meeting. An official version of this was published, but the paragraph that I'm you know, maybe I'll give it to you to read. Yeah. Uh, it's about Roosevelt is saying to Stalin and Churchill that he is going to meet with the king of Saudi Arabia after this conference, King Saud. And Stalin asks him, does he intend to make any concessions to King Saud of Saudi Arabia? And I'll let you read what the answer is for the arrows. The president replied that there was only one concession he thought he might offer and that was to give him the six million Jews in the United States. Yes. That is, where is this is a collection? Where, where is this from? That is from the uh, papers of Edward Stettinius, who was the Secretary of State at the time of Yalta. Those papers are at the University of Virginia in Charlotte.